A good person is no longer the one who helps you and so on. A good person is the one who does not harm you. That's enough. For me, he's my best friend. All of you are really lovely people. Perhaps my best friends, those who don't harm me. Gone are the days when you expect goodness from someone. You don't. You just expect them not to harm you. Please, don't touch me. Just leave me alone. When you hear something bad about me, just close your mouth. I don't even want you to defend me. Close your mouth. That's enough for me. That's all. That's the best person today because we've arrived at an age where people are dirty because the devil is even dirtier. That's the reason. People only know how to gossip. We have WhatsApp, we have BBM. BBM is becoming obsolete according to me. But anyway, we have WhatsApp, we have so many other things. And to be honest, what do we use Facebook and everything for? Gossip. What else? We just talk. We just show off. We show things we don't own. I've seen it with my own eyes. People walk into some of these big stores in London and they start trying out shoes that they never would own. And when they take pictures with those shoes and put them up online pretending like they owned them, little did the people know that they were just harassing the guys working at the shops to pack the shoes back into the boxes and put them away. Those were not even your shoes. But that's what Facebook has done to people. It's Facebook, but they're showing shoes. It should have been shoe book, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So, to become happy at the happiness of someone is something that is no longer, to be honest with you, it, you would find it, mashallah, in communities and societies, but it's no longer what people expect. Moments ago, I was telling Sheikh Muslih that, you know what, not everyone is happy at your happiness. I just said it, we were speaking about something and I said, not everyone's happy at your happiness. Get used to it. Let's get used to it. That's it. For as long as they don't harm you at your happiness. Imagine, I'm not worried if they're not happy. But why must they harm me? For what? So why I'm saying this is because, Wallahi, today we have so many activities of Islam. Some people have TV stations, some people have radio stations, some people are involved in going out, taking the children and going out and, you know, trying to participate in this way. Some people are imams in the masajid giving good lectures, some people might be running madrasas, some people might be printing booklets, some people might be building something, some people might be reaching out to people in a way where the homeless are being catered for, some people might be having conferences and conventions trying to lure the youth, all that. That is good work, brilliant work. Learn to support one another because I tell you the ummah is being fragmented today for nothing, for nothing. Learn to support one another. If you don't, we do not see a bright future. A lot of the youth I speak to tell me I don't want to go to the masjid. And why? I've never heard people say this so loudly before. Because the Imams are fighting. This one says don't listen to that one. That one says this one is a deviant and this one says that and that one says you don't even realize the impact of the statements being made on the youth who couldn't even be bothered. They'd rather sit and watch movies. They'd rather be hooked onto pornography and than anything else. This is what's happening. May Allah forgive us. So why I say this as well is because today we have this beautiful Muslim fair. Someone somewhere was behind it. There is a team of people who work and we come, mashallah, you know, you know who's Nicki Minaj? <laughs> the laugh means we know them, we know who she is exactly, right or wrong? If you had to have, and I'm going to say this, I'm so sorry, right? If you had to have a dinner with her, what would you pay? What would you pay? I don't want to embarrass you to start asking you to put up your hands. You know what you would pay. The brother with the camera here is already giving me some approximate figures, you know. <laughs> Mashallah. And if you have an Islamic event where proceeds go to charity, proceeds perhaps go here, there, we will be the first to complain. That's it. Wallahi, it's a fact. We should be saying, my brother, listen, you charged X amount for a dinner, for example, for a good cause, I want to anonymously pay for 20 tickets. Go and pick people a 
according to your own will to come through and to enjoy and to participate those who can't afford as well. Subhanallah. But look at how shaitan works. Let's not give you that example of the person I said, but another person, anyone, a pop star, a Bollywood actor, actress, or anyone else. If they were to come, we'd probably pay even more. Yeah. You'd be surprised at the type of people who would visit and who would attend those type of functions as well. You'd be shocked. I recall once there was a Bollywood star who visited and the people who bought the, the VIP, meaning the main tables where you would pay in the tens of thousands of dollars were actually Muslims. Do you know that? They were actually Muslims. They were right the cream of the crop. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance. Now, when we have something like the Muslim fair, something that is, it may be different. Sometimes there might be something. But remember, we are catering for categories of people in society that need it. If someone is already in the masjid five times a day, they're already motivated, they're already, you know, doing a lot of good and they're already participating in every form of goodness that they can. Sometimes, the message we have might not exactly be of great meaning to them because they're already in the masjid. I mean, I'm going to stand here and tell you, please fulfill your five times salah. A lot of you might say, I'm already fulfilling my five times salah. But for those of you who may be not fulfilling your five salah, it will benefit you. If I tell you something to do and something not to do, for those of you who are not doing it, it will benefit you. So those who are doing it cannot say, these guys are wasting their time. No, we are targeting a different audience. We have a different approach. We have a different style. We speak in a different way. People tell me, why do you joke? I crack jokes. This today, somebody came to me. I've been traveling so much, I can't recall if it was in Barbados this morning or if it was in Trinidad this afternoon. But someone came to me here in Trinidad. Now I remember. Okay, sorry, I was getting your sickness, Habibi. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone came to me and told me, I like your joke. And I said, about what? He says, the one about relaxing and delipsing. Okay, have you heard that one? So I looked at him, a young boy, wallahi, a small guy, really small, you know. And I looked at him and I said, oh, they've got two more brothers. He said, who are they? I said, one is amazing and the other one is confusing. <laughs> and he was laughing. He was laughing his head off, you know, a little boy. And so I thanked Allah. Why? Because, you know, people have told me, hey, I've got a child, I've got a daughter, I've got a son, and they don't listen to anyone. They don't want to listen to anything to do with religion. They don't want to have anything to do with the scholars, nothing. They are, they are you know, whatever. They've painted a bad picture of these people. So what do I do? I said, do me a favor. Go to YouTube, right? Search funny with the name of a sheikh that you think would be perhaps you know, cracking a few nice, decent jokes. Short, very short. Doesn't have to be a long clip. And just send them to your child. And just say for laughs. One, two, three. Can I tell you what? You send them 10 jokes. 10 little points of laughter for laughs. They will laugh so hard their bellies will ache. What are they going to do? What happens? When you see, that, you know, there is someone called Trevor Noah. Do you know who he is? Well, Google him. Trevor Noah is a comedian, okay? He's now in the States, but he's a South African. He's a comedian, stand-up comedy. He's quite good. To be honest with you, a lot of what he says makes sense. He might make people laugh, but he's got a message there a lot of the times. So if you listen to one and it's so good, what are you going to do? Someone sent you a clip and it says Trevor Noah and you heard it and it was so good. What are you going to do? Tell me quickly. Can someone say it? Search for more, right? You're going to search his name, Trevor Noah, and you're going to try and get a whole list of things and see this man. Let's see what else he said. Because why? I've enjoyed something that came from him. So I'm sure there must be some others that are really good. Now what happens? You sent a joke and another joke. When they start Googling the name, it's no longer only jokes. That's the idea. It's an approach. It's a way of getting through to people. Now do you understand? It's a way of getting through to people. They will remember something, but... It will continue. Some people say, okay, so there's motivation. 
Is there anything beyond that? When you know enough to carry on with your deen, all you need is motivation. When, you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires you to continue further and you want to specialize in the deen, you will have to then attend workshops, you'll have to perhaps enroll in a school, perhaps enroll at a university, perhaps attain a degree in studies, Islamic studies and so on. But if you would like to get a little bit more, yes, there is specialization even on YouTube. Only talking about YouTube. You can then get a series of talks on a specific topic. But that will come when you start off in a specific way. Some people will go straight there because their level is high. But we're talking of the youngsters today. I spoke earlier today and I made mention of, and I said it yesterday in Barbados. One of the reasons why we are being diverted and forgetting what life is all about is because of the entertainment industry. Do you know that? The entertainment industry is so powerful. Say what you want. It's overtaken a lot of us already. Entertainment. It affects our lives. It influences the way we look, the way we talk, the way we say things, the accent we have. What happens? A lot of us are affected. Because why? It's powerful. And can I tell you one gadget to blame for the downfall of a lot of people? is actually a mobile phone. It's a mobile phone. It is technology such that the country of technology known as Japan, you're not allowed to touch a phone before a certain age. You will be fined if your child is playing with a phone before the age of six or, or eight. I think it's six if I'm not mistaken. No phone. You're not allowed. The child must play with proper mechanical toys. Did you know that? And these are the, the fundies when it comes to technology. They are the top of the notch. You know what I mean. Japan. Why? And with us, let me be honest with you. One and a half years old, the, we are proud of the fact that my son can actually handle my iPhone better than I can. How old is the child? One and a half. And we're proud about it. And the other mother says, mine is one year, four months. <laughs> That's what we do. One year, four months. Don't worry, she's just acknowledging that what we said is right. Okay. So, and what happens? They start off, they play games, they, have, they haven't had a proper childhood. And what happens? On there, those games, one leads to another. A lot of the games are connected to violence. And this is planned. I always tell myself, why are the fathers of these games not creating a game where you, get a re where, where you score points when you save a person? You only score points when you kill someone. You only score points when you do something bad. But when you save a life or when you go out to feed for every hamper that you gave the poor, you get points. Those games would be boring for our kids. They want to drive... At what speed? <laughs> Do you know? From that age, people blame me for driving fast. Come on, man. Come on. 250 to 300 kilometers an hour on that little game that you're playing and you're turning the corners and you're going around and the quicker you can get across, why don't they give you points to stick to the speed limits? I haven't found a single game that gives you points to stick to the speed limits. Not one. Why? It shows you that they are just teaching you to break the rules, to do as you want, to go and kill people, to attack. That's the entertainment. Those are the games they play with. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. Think about this. It's something we need to all cry about. The non-Muslims agree with what I'm saying. They agree that we have a crisis. We have a problem across the globe. Those who are sane, those who are religious, no matter what their religion is, those who have a little bit of morality in them, they will tell you the same. The skirts are all going higher. And guess what's happening to the trousers? They're all going lower. That's society today. So this problem that we face, subhanallah, when we have people trying to address these categories of youth today who become bored very fast, so we've come up with a new approach. 
We've come up with Muslim fair. We've come up with revival of the Ummah. We've come up with so many different ideas. It may not be your typical ideas of 1950 and 60, 70, 80 and even 90. And even just 2000. Today, here we are sitting in 2016. The ideas that we need to think of. We want to hear from you. What's the best ways of getting people together? It might not be ideal. But who said we're living in an ideal society? I cannot keep on sitting in a masjid and saying, guys, the Islamic talk is only going to be in the masjid because you know what? The people I'm aiming at don't even come to the masjid. Do you get the point? So I need to start thinking ideas. This is why I say support all good activities. You never know your own children might be benefiting from this. So the aim of what I said from the point of beginning to now, and I did not want to speak so long, but you know, sometimes it just... When everyone just looks at you and no one's yawning, then you keep on talking. <laughs> so the aim is to say, my brothers and sisters, support the activities. Say a good word. Be a part of it. At least make dua for them. If something's going wrong, you need to be specialized. What's specialized? You know, moments ago, I was speaking to Sheikh Musleh again. You see, we, we, we meet once a year, but it's a specialized meeting. I said, Sheikh, you know, we were speaking about one, a certain brother. Let me say his name. You know, have you heard of Dr. Muhammad Salah? I've heard a few yeses, right? Brilliant man. Can I tell you something? If there is something good about you, he'll say it in public. If there is something that needs rectification, he will call you. He will invite you into his room. He'll offer you some tea and coffee. And he'll tell you, just the two of you are sitting together. And he'll tell you, you know, my brother... This is what I feel. And then you have a chance to respond and he has a chance to sing. And you end up saying, Jazakallah khair, thank you very much. Tight hug. Everything happens closed. Nobody knows what was discussed in there. And the matter is sealed. Why? He has a concern. I'd like to hope, as a, he's a friend of mine, a concern for the entire ummah. I don't want to embarrass people. That's what the world teaches you. You know something bad? Facebook. You know something else bad? Twitter. You know something else bad? Sorry, I'm mixing this with a Malaysian accent because I'm just flying in from Malaysia. So forgive me. <laughs> but anything that happens, you want to put it up on the social media. It's a bad thing. If you're a true believer, you will be concerned. The good things, put them up. The bad things, address them. Address them. Go to the individual. Say, look, I heard this. They'll tell you, look, my brother, this is false. Oh, thank you. You clarified it. It's enough. With us, even when the individual clarifies it and they say, no, it's not true, we will go back thinking, nah, they're lying, man. They're lying. They're telling a lie. It's the weakness of our iman. We don't trust ourselves, so we find it difficult to trust others. That's the problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You know, now I see everyone's looking at me and I think you're telling me, time is up, time is up. I recall giving a lecture once uh, at a masjid and an old uncle got up from the back and started. <laughs> so when I finished, he met me later. He said, no, I was meaning carry on. I said, come on, we speak a different language here. So if anyone gets up now and does this, I'll give it another 30 minutes. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for bringing us here together, smiling uh, with each other for the right cause. Uh, we don't need that white light yet, you know. <laughs> but uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for any shortcomings that we've had. I, I have a habit of spreading the message of love and peace. I have a habit of spreading the message of tolerance and coexistence. I have a habit of spreading the message of trying to understand people rather than creating difficulty, no matter who they are. We are all different. Every one of us is different. That's why we have a name and an identity, totally different. But a winner is he or she who can get along with others, who can tolerate them. You need a lot of patience to get along with people, a lot of patience. Today at Jumu'ah, and I'm going to say it because some of you might have been at the Jumu'ah, there was a child yelling. There was a child yelling to my right, literally screaming at the top of his voice. I was not even disturbed. And the second khutbah, I changed what I wanted to say to speaking about patience and how we have to tolerate people. The reason was, I did not want anyone after salah to go to that father and say, you know what, your child made a noise. No, so what? It happened at the time of the Prophet Who am I to say don't make a noise? For what? It was my test. 
I, I ended with a smile and I was hoping that everyone else did. We need to tolerate, not everyone's the same. Some people don't have the understanding. Some people don't have another alternative. Some people, that brother must have come so early to be in the first saf or the second saf that he was in. And now we're chasing him away when there's a few minutes left. Just because your child's making a noise, just move out. Come on. And that Jumu'ah for him is necessary. Someone might say your wife should have taken. It's like when your mobile phone rings. I remember once in Salah, in Salah, we were sitting in the last tashahud. You know, it's Al-Qadat Al-Akhira, just when you're reading Tahiyyat. And someone's phone rang with a dirty song. When I say dirty song, I mean, you know, nowadays the songs are such that they are worse than pornography. They describe things in such a dirty way. You might ask me, how do I know? Can I tell you how I know? Let me tell you. <laughs> we were at a certain supermarket. We were at a supermarket, right? And in the background, there was a music playing, which we don't take notice of. But the volume was slightly louder. And I was walking down the aisle and I heard a bad word. <gasps> And I'm like, what? And then I concentrated for a few seconds. Trust me, I put my trolley back and walked out. I couldn't take more of it. And I learned that this is not only the new type of music, but people are playing it publicly without even giving a damn. Their movements have become dirty and filthy. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So. We need to be very patient. People come from different backgrounds. They have different problems. Some people might not look at you and smile because they have problems that make it difficult for them to smile. You smile. If they don't smile back, excuse them. I had it on the plane, the aircraft coming here. And when I walked in, there's always, you see a guy with a beard, with a thobe, you know. And there was a child sitting next to us and the child says, I'm scared to the mother to the father. Now I was a little bit concerned because if the child and the child was repeating that and, and if the child keeps repeating that, you know, they might decide nowadays, this is how it works. They might decide, listen, this passenger, please, the uh, other passengers are frightened of you. You've got to walk out. Do you know they can do that? They have done it to so many people. So I looked at the child, I said, don't worry. You know what? It's okay. You won't be scared. You know? And then I realized that the father's seat was a little bit of a distance and and my seat, which was just across the aisle from the child, was, was better to have been the father's seat. And the father's trying to convince all the other passengers to let him sit next to his child or near the child. And I offered immediately. I said, look, I don't mind. I can shift. He says, oh, but no, we'll take it from you as a last resort. Guess what? Allah wanted it. That last resort happened. And the father came to me, I'll take you up on your offer. I said, why not? By all means, I got up and I walked out. And that broke the ice with everyone and everything. Do you understand the point? And I went and I sat in my own. Some people will talk to you. Some people won't talk to you. But you have a, have a smile. Have a good expression. Imagine a Muslim walking in and... <laughs> walking to the plane and you're frowning and you're looking. That's the wrong place to be doing that, my beloved brother or sister. There you walk up, you greet a few people, even if you don't want to, you just greet them. Hi, you know, what's, how, what's going on? You know, they might nudge each other and say, that's our last greeting. But no, <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. When you land, they'll realize that's when they can look at you, congratulate you. Hey, I noticed, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. May Allah open our doors. So I was saying, you see this type of talk, the way I'm speaking right now, and the way a lot of the new generation of speakers do speak, you find the target audience is a little bit different in the sense that, you know, you, you may not have those who are not impressed by this type of speech, sitting and listening because they're on a higher level. Well, I didn't tell them to come. They can go into the masjid and they can sit. And mashallah, they can listen to those lectures which perhaps would make you sometimes you know, feel the fire of Jahannam if anything's gone wrong. It's that, and that's what happens. Because it, sometimes, sometimes, uh, the lecturers give talks in such a way that they instill more fear than hope, although we are supposed to be having a balance. When you instill hope, it, make, it, gives, you, it gives you motivation in this world that is becoming hopeless. The world is becoming so everything, you turn on the news, hopeless. 
You listen to something hopeless, the gossip hopeless, your life hopeless, the currency crashing, things going up in price. Everything is becoming more and more difficult. And even the imam in the masjid is starting to doom us a little bit more. Oh, come on. I think he's going through economic problems as well, maybe. Well, the imams always do. You know, they're highly underpaid in a lot of countries. I think in Trinidad, you guys, was it here that you decided you're going to pay them equivalent to doctors? Was it here? Everyone's saying no. Well, now you know why they're dooming you. Try paying them a bit more and see what they tell you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You might have a more positive message. You might have greater contribution. But at the same time, subhanallah, I, I think that everyone needs to understand that all the people doing anything good deserve some form of not only recognition, but contribution. Minimum is in the form of dua. So I want to end by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, help all those who are doing any form of good work, no matter who they are. And oh Allah, those who are not doing good work, motivate them to do good work. Those who are participating in evil, Ya Allah, protect them in a way that they can come out of that evil and start heading in the direction of the good work that we're talking about. May Allah bless you all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.